Lord, we thank you. We give praise to your name. I'm honored to have the privilege of standing here this morning to share God's word with God's people. Standing here, the first thing that happened that I was conscious of to see two grown-up men standing in front of me here. And I said to myself, Dukpa Adebanjo, you who was once not a people have become the people of God. What a privilege of what grace can do. A young boy staying on the street of Halagomeji who could not speak one word of English before coming to church. And grace qualifies a man. And I'm so grateful and I'm honored for this privilege. I'm so, so thankful to, thank, to stand before my fathers and have the privilege of sharing God's word. Reverend Sam and Mommy Busy, I'm grateful, Ma. Thank you for this privilege. I'm thankful to have the National Secretary seated here and our resident pastor. And I'm here holding the mic. It is only what grace can do. I'm grateful for people that I can call fathers and mothers who nurtured me in this house. When I was a very young teenager here, Brother Duro was my senior high president and I'm wondering what will it mean to grow up and have knowledge of the word of God like this man and he's ever been consistent and he's still here I am grateful thank you thank you for all the fathers Pastor Tunde Ojo was my counselor as well or a friend of my counselor because um, the King Kainde was my counselor and they were the one teaching us and I'm grateful that they are still standing in faith and the example of a believer, we are grateful. Permit me to express my appreciation as well to the man who introduced me to the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't tell him. No, I told him I would be preaching here and never invited him. But my elder brother, retired Colonel Adebanjo, is here this morning. I celebrate the grace of God upon your life. Thank you very much. I'm grateful for the gift of a wife. She's the feminine expression of my masculinity. She's the feelings I don't know how to express. She's the tears I won't let fall down. My eyes, she's my softer side. She compliments me, and she has made the man that I am today. I am grateful to God. I'm grateful for my children. When the medical verdict was that I would never have one, and God has blessed me with these two wonderful nations, Tenila Nimi and Araolua, my daughters are here this morning as well. It's important that if a man wants to talk about family, then it, is, it will be good for him to bring his family. So if at any point he's exaggerating, it can be clear, Lori Ro. <laughs> but grace will not allow us to exaggerate his word and will start speaking lies in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we are thankful for the atmosphere that is in this place, conducive for teaching and hearing God's word. We're thankful, Lord, because your spirit is brewing over the atmosphere here and you will make all things beautiful in your time. The Bible says, as Jesus both began to teach and to preach, the power of God was present to heal. I'm asking, Lord, that your power will be present, radiating with so much unction, glory, and power in this house, that you will heal every form of emotional abuse, misuse, in the name of Jesus Christ. By the reason of the word of grace that we will hear today, will be thoroughly furnished unto good works and men will come to the saving grace of our savior i'm thankful because i know you are here and because you are here there is liberty we walk in this grace and we leave you god to be god in every situation and glorify yourself forevermore for in jesus precious name we have prayed within the time allocated to me i will be talking around the subject matter that i call is approver my choice is approver my choice. I'm mindful that your text has been taken from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 and I did add verse 20 to it as well and that's why I came up with the subject matter 
is approval, my choice. I'm mindful as well that the theme at the national level for the family month is Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. And if you take time to read, and I believe because I took time to listen to what um, Dickin Bimbo Adebakin had been saying, we saw that there is common denominator between Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 19 and 20 and Joshua chapter 24 verse 15 is the word choice. Both gave us condition to choose. As a matter of fact, the choir took a long time to celebrate the love of God and us are claiming we love Jesus. There can never be love when the power of choice is taken away. For there to be love, you must have the power to choose. If it's about compulsion, it can never be love. As a matter of fact, Paul told us, he said, we know the terror of God. What do we do? We persuade men. We can't force men. Nobody can be forced to make decisions for Christ. It will be choice. And I pray in the name of Jesus, we will choose rightly in the name of Jesus. You will agree with me that from the moment outside the warm comfort of the mother's womb, we are greeted with a harsh and unfriendly reality of life. In fact, if you show, refuse to show your disgust with what life has got to offer you, you will be spanked. Have you ever seen a child given back to who has enjoyed the warmth of the mother's womb and when he came to the world refused to cry? What will happen to that child? And so it is obvious that this unfriendliness is there and if you refuse to show it you will be visited with sanction as we grow this harshness of living becomes more visible and more tangible we set out with lofty ideas but few skills and limited understanding of overcoming life challenges some confront it and overcome the obstacles while others leave them unchallenged by the reason of our actions and inactions. Life will probably not be friendly, but the choices of life we will make determines eventually what we will get out of life. And I pray as we talk about this subject matter, we will choose well in the name of Jesus Christ. And in laying the foundation, I want to call the attention of young people to the fact that the greatest ethics that we must imbibe in our Christian community is the ethics of sacrifice and not success. The ethics of what? Sacrifice and not success. You know, sometimes ago, growing up as a child, it was said that there was a prize-giving day in a particular school, and a child and his father went for that prize-giving occasion. When they got there, they started making the presentation. And they said sciences, art, and they kept mentioning names. And some few names were reoccurring. And the father would give the son a job and would say, I want money here. Meaning, see children. And they finished the occasion. His child was not called. Thoroughly embarrassed, they decided to go home. On the way back home, while they were trekking to the bus stop, an SUV drove by. The child looked at the father. Another exotic car drove by while they were trekking to the bus stop. And the child said, I want Barbary. <laughs> Invariably, when we exaggerate success over sacrifice, the propensity of coming to error is almost constant. I said all that to retreat this to younger people that in making the one of the most decisions in life which is regards with to marry, sacrifice must be embraced before we look at success. We've heard the stories of our fathers in this house when they started. Our general overseer have told us his own story when they started. And I'm sure Sister B.C. had no business marrying him at that point in time. But because a woman chose to embrace, embrace long-range benefit as against short-time gratification, it was easier to make that choice. Because for the joy that was set ahead, you endure. And this context must be preached to young people 
I'm not encouraging you to embrace non-entity. But it can no longer be said in our camp that the, our young ladies are saying they would rather cry in a Lamborghini than to be smiling with a legacy dress. Choices has to be made based on sacrifice. I married a woman that when we were getting married, her salary was 120000 while mine was 30000 And we decided to get married and we agreed that in our family we have 150000 And the head of our family your humble self. And as we grew in life, she got promoted and rose to higher status. And by the fourth year of our marriage, I was earning probably half our salary. By fifth, sixth year, we were probably earning a par. By the seventh year, the equation reversed that I was earning. What the ratio of the same four to one. And I will not exaggerate the story. Right now, she's earning more than me again. But nothing has been taken away. I'm the head of our family. When she made those sacrifices, and when I had the earning power, I said to her, thank you for being a good woman. What would you want? She said, I would have loved to do, have my master's, but I don't know. I said, we can afford it. I said, it's going to cost so much. I said, we can afford it. And thank God we made those sacrifices. It is the benefit of those sacrifices that when COVID hit, I had a woman who was a high-level person who can work at home and can she earn a salary when clients are no longer coming to the law firm. Sacrifice must be taken before success. You can't make your primary choice by the reason of a car somebody is driving or the pedigree of the family of the background it came from. If those are the reasons of making your choice and say his father is a reverend, go and ask Abigail, who married Naba, a fool who was from the tribe of Caleb. There is pedigree to the background, but what is the quality of the person? And so choices of life must never be made on, sacrifice, on, on success in excluding sacrifice. And to drive this point home, Luke chapter 21 verses 1 to 4 made it clear. The people went into the temple and they were putting their offerings there. And a the woman came, put a little as against the mighty or the great amounts people before had put. And our master and our savior, in affirming what she has done, said to them, this woman has done much more because sacrifice must always come before success. Daughter of Zion, I dare say it again, is an insult to the personality of God that the choice of the man you want to marry is primarily based on the comfort he can give you. Who says you cannot attain to it? Are you not a child of God? When did we start allocating it? And it is based on gender. We are heirs and joint heirs of the grace of life. And if God can give it for a man, he can do it for his children, the daughters as well. Let you never be limited, limited by the reason of your gender the power of choice will always have the power to choose but the probable consequence or consequences of our choice may not primarily be within our own power or control god does not remove the freedom of choice from us when we misuse it neither will he likely remove the consequences even when we ignore them there are consequences to the choices of life that we make whether in the immediate, whether in the long run, but you cannot make choice and ignore the probable consequence. Most of the time, we want to have the power to make our choices, but we refuse to accept that there can be consequence to it. In my short time of ministry, when I meet young people, and primarily they are having trust issue between them, and I've had reason to counsel some, nine out of ten, Sadly, I've had intercourse before marriage. And the reason that they've done that before marriage haunts them. Immediately, they see the partner with someone else. They're on the edge. Because they knew what they had no business doing transpired between them. And so when you see the other person, there will not be trust. But when we make actions or we choose, there are probable consequences. When we thought we were smart and we could do it and nobody would know and we can clean mouth, the probable consequence of that action 
is the mistrust that grew even after the marriage. I had a one wonderful experience that could have shattered my marriage if the foundation wasn't right. By the nature of my job, I work from home, or should I say my office is just downstairs from where I stay. And my wife into banking, goes out, comes later, and I'm always the person to be with the children first. But on this particular day, there was pastor's meeting, and I had to leave. And fortunately for me, and unfortunately for the devil, my wife got home just by six or before six. And she opened her door of our room, and there in the, sit in the bedroom was the sleepers of our house help. So she gave me a call, and she said to me, the house helps bedroom sleepers is in our room. I said, what can for? And she asked the question, did you wear it? I said, did I wear house girl slippers? <laughs> I said, but it's in our room. So I said to her, Hesby, send that young lady on an errand, check her stuff. Most likely she has an extra car, extra key to our room. And it was discovered in the room. And so what has happened? By whatever ingenuity, she has made a copy of her key. And so when we're out of the room, she has access to that room. Because we don't allow her there at all. But if the foundation at the beginning wasn't right, and she made that discovery, what would have happened? And so we had to inquire, and we had to send her packing. My home wasn't threatened, because choices in time passed came to speak. But if that was how I've been, I said, that's how to my share, share Anukiri. But thank God, choices in time past will come to speak for you in the future. I beg you, child of God, God cannot be wrong. Do not think you are wise and you know better than God. If he's telling you no, embrace it. And I agree that he's saying it because it is in your best interest. And so when we want to choose Quickly, I want you to take this to heart. I know Sister Bimbo has mentioned them, some of them. I know most of the time when we want to choose as to who to marry, we allow ourselves to fall in love. And having fallen in love, we ask the question, does he fear God? But if you look at the template of God in 2 Peter chapter 1, from verses 1 all through to 10, there are some things that was expressly mentioned, especially from verse 5, when it says, to your faith, add what? Virtue. And so, in making the most important decision of your life as to who to marry, the question of faith must be answered. Do I share faith with this person? You can't relegate it. You can't put it to the background. No matter the experience of what has happened to you with another believer in church, it cannot be enough for you to embrace somebody who is not in faith. Somebody will say, what's the difference? Even the people in church who are born again disappoint somebody. Why could you not go for somebody in the world? Don't fall into that error. Because when you make one wrong choice, the propensity of making further wrong choices is constant. So I beg you, the question of faith must be answered. When you answer the question of faith, the second thing stated therein is what? Virtue. Character. What is the nature of this person? When you answer the question of virtue, you must answer the question of knowledge. When you answer the question of knowledge, you must answer the question of perseverance. When you answer the question of perseverance, you must answer the question of what? Kindness. You must answer the question of patience. And you must answer the question of brotherly love. Who is this person in the community of believers? And thereafter, the Bible says love. If you fail to follow this process, you will be opening yourself to heartbreak continuously. Don't fall then to want to examine character or nature. Examine nature, character, and disposition to the subject of faith and relationship with God before allowing yourself to fall in love. Relationship across board must always be by choice and not by force. You know, despite knowing what is in their best interest at any given point in time, we can persuade 
but we mustn't take the power of choice from people. And I dare say this because I know there are parents hearing me this morning as well. Your young adult can no longer be forced as regards what to do. When you take that position, it bats rebellion. There is engagement, there is persuasion, and at times, sadly, we will allow people to choose. In Luke chapter 15 from verse 11, a man had two sons. And the younger one came to the father and said, give me my inheritance. The father knew it was not in his best interest, but it cannot be forced. It did not make him an irresponsible father because choice of life has to be made. He took the inheritance, he squandered it, he came to his senses only by the reason of hunger. Not spiritual exercise. He just came to his senses when hunger wired him very well. We can't overprotect people. We must give them the power of choice but we can prayerfully address the situation that they are in. My elder brother probably will remember a young family member was so troublesome, so troublesome that his case, if it had been in the Old Testament, it would have been that one that said, if you have a child that is rebellious, that will not hear his father, you not hear his mother, bring him out and let them stone him. That was his case. And so the parents said to me, they came to meet me, they said, this young boy, we will bring him here. Help us trick him and take him to Cornell's barracks and let them flog him very well and lock him, lock him inside the guardroom so that he can come to his senses. We agreed to that plan and we took the young man. Unfortunately for me, we got there. My brother was not at home. What do we do? I came to my end and I said, can I pray for you? The boy looked at me and laughed. And I put my hand on his head and I prayed for him. And he laughed all through. Drove him back to his house. Two weeks on the, thereafter, I do not lie. The mother called to thank me and express her appreciation for the very good discipline that the boy was given. Because there is a changed person in the house. I give God praise because it is only God that could have done what force could not achieve. I charge you under God. Embrace God. He's your source and is your sustainer. He's the one who can make these children to turn out to be who you intend for them to be. Your shouting, your nagging probably will not do the job. Change position. Change how you are doing things. Change the way of engagement. And if I dare say, change the way you are relating with their father or their mother. And greatly, you will see improvement in the home. Quickly, within the limited time, I still have almost running out of this time I'm given. Quickly want to go through some certain things that I need for you young people to understand in making major and minor choices of life. I want you to quickly ruminate over the following. God has got your back. God has got your back. As a child, we had a delay before going to school. I recall I was in the university campus and one of my friends, a contemporary, age mate, was invited to the fellowship to preach. I was probably in my year four, year five then. And he came with this Mercedes Benz, maybe 2.30. And he gave testimony and he preached a wonderful message. And while he was preaching, I got up because I knew this guy was my age mate. It was only the fact that me, I was an uncle before coming to school. I went out, walked around his car and I said, Mercedes 300. When will I ever walk to attain to buying a car? But hear me and hear me well. I know whom I've believed. And I'm persuaded he's able to keep what has been committed into his hand against that day. In Genesis chapter 15 verse 1, Abraham answering the question of the offer that God made to him. God said to him, Abraham, I'm your shield an exceedingly great reward. I am the one that you have for an inheritance. Abraham answering in verse 2, he said, God, what will you give me since I do not have a child? I thought if a man has God, he has everything. God is your primary source and he has got your back covered. Do not allow the circumstance of your life to be your determination. You cannot be responsible for the circumstance of life you find yourself, but you are primarily responsible for your reaction in the circumstance of life. 
God has got your back covered. And if you believe that, it's a matter of time that every promises he has made to you will surely come to pass. I am persuaded concerning you. And it was a matter of time. By the time I was buying my own first car, as a matter of fact, messages 200 and 300, 230 were no longer in vogue. That is what the grace of God can do for you. Is that Pastor Edo who seated there? Is it Pastor Edo? Pastor Edo, probably you may not remember. I once saw you and your wife inside Danfo. Danfo going to Sabo many years ago. Jadisola, your wife, is a good friend of mine. And I saw you inside that bus. Big brother, do you still enter bath down for now, sir? That is what the power of grace can do. You cannot afford to limit your future based on the experiences of your present circumstance. You have God, and it will come true for you. Because he said concerning you and I, in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2, when you pass through the waters, I'm with you. When you go through the fire, it will not kindle upon you. You have God as your source and your sustenance. And when a man has God, he has everything. Have that at the back of your mind. Confront life and don't let anyone limit you. I once, when I had no business though, dated a young lady in church. And by the time we were to break up, it was sir. And she said to me, my father and nephew never hear I went out with someone like you. It was meant to be a, a blow below the bed. And I said to her, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, we will not be judged by the status of our parents. We will be judged by what we've done with our hands and what we've attained with life. Fifteen years exactly. Our path crossed. When they were going, and for as many parents who can do that, I thank God for you. When they were going for summer on a yearly basis, my reality was aeroplane, itumfolo, bamikiya mieleko, because it was never my reality. But by the time we were meeting, fifteen years afterwards, we met at Atlanta. And so what are you doing here? Well, I said, I came for vacation. No longer my parents paying the bills. But what grace has enabled a man to attain? Child of God, hear me and hear me well. God has your back. And there is a future that is ahead of you. If a man embraces it in the place of sacrifice, it is glorious and it is beautiful. Two, we value our freedom of choice. But responsibility must help us to see that it is infinite. When you choose a road, you choose where it leads to. Are you hearing me? When you choose a road, you choose where it is leading to. And so we must choose wisely because sin, according to Steve, um, is this Steve Fari, in his book, Finishing Strong, he said sin will take you farther than you are willing to go. It will cost you more than you are willing to pay. It will keep you longer than you are willing to stay. Can I say it one more time? Sin will take you farther than you are willing to go. It will cost you more than you are willing to pay. It will keep you longer than you are willing to stay. I pray in the name of Jesus, we will choose right and God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me begin to start rounding up by telling you that three, unfortunately, the choice we make may not always be the best because we often do not take time to analyze and we are too emotional when we are making them. You make the choice of a brother based on the fact that he told you, God said, child of God, daughter of Zion, what is God telling you in return? It will not suffice that he lay hands on someone and they got up from the dead. That's not what made him your husband. The word of prophecy that he gave and it came to pass does not suffice as the only basis why you must accept a pro proposal. You must be seen as someone too, growing in faith, wherein you can own the decision and it can never just be the opinion of someone. The prodigal son went on his way, made his choice, but as I've told you, there was a probable consequence for his action. I want you to know that you can love unconditionally, but you must have conditional acceptance for bad behavior. If it doesn't fit, don't force it. Relationship is not by force, it's by choice. And you must get that clear. And so when we make choices of life, it must not always, always be so that people don't talk if probably we've made a wrong choice. I said four, 
one wrong choice has the probability of leading to further wrong choices. I've made that clear to you. The prodigal son took his inheritance. He never bargained. He will feed with, uh, he, will, he will stay with pigs. He never bargained that he will come to that point where he will have nothing again. But it was his reality. By the reason of the choices he embraced. Five, take responsibility for the outcome of your action. In verse 17, he said to himself, I will go back to my father. Stop blaming people. He had the choice of blaming the government for not providing social security for him when he had no job. He did not blame his father for parental negligence that if you knew that this was the outcome, why did you allow me? He took responsibility, went back to his father without any air of entitlement and he was taken back. And before you quickly say, why would the father say that? Especially for the sisters in church. And you say, we have been in church. We are not messing around. We are not doing stuff. Yet, it is these people who go out, come back in the place of repentance that are still getting the fine, fine brothers. We're not like them who compare themselves with themselves. God is the one that you have an inheritance with. He's the one who is your father. In due season, he will duly compensate you. Have you forgotten that after the, young, the older son had made his complaint, the father said, all I have is yours. He has taken his own part. Grace was extended to him to bring him back. But his action has decided what he used with his resources. All the father has is yours. Irrespective of the time it will come true. It is yours. And when you enter into it and you enjoy the quality of life God can give you, you realize that there is a difference between those who serve God and those who serve him not. Six, we shouldn't beat ourselves further down beyond the consequences of our action. When the action has taken place and it is wrong, don't further beat yourself down. The only thing we can do from there up is what? After the ground is to what? Is to get up. We can't go further down again. We're on the floor. And so stop beating yourself down. You compromise faith, child of God, and you did things you have no business doing. And on that basis, you want to abandon the faith. That is the lie from the pit of hell. That is exactly the decision the devil wants you to do. Abandon faith and leave everything. Come in the place of repentance and there will be restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. And lastly, can I tell you, God can give you a new start. There can always be a new beginning with him. You probably will go through some stuff, but there is always a new beginning in God. The father changes cloth. Put a ring on his hand and welcome him. I'm making that invitation to someone here today that irrespective of what you've done, the arms of the father is ever open. And can I sound this caveat, sir, before I round off this message? No mortal man, no mortal man is permitted to be the determinant of your past experience if there is forgiveness in Christ. I've heard of some young folks who will invite a lady in church out. And when you take them out, the first question you ask them, are you a virgin? It is disrespectful and you must stop doing that. It's what grace has done for us. I guess that seizure is to let me know that time is up. In conclusion, guys, we have all made several choices in the course of our lives. Some with positive and others with negative outcomes. Perpetual regret is not enough. Let us allow him to lead us henceforth in ensuring that we win his approval and make it our choice. Bow down your heads with me and let us pray. The Bible says, who are you to condemn a man before his master he stands or falleth? And he says, yea, God is able to make him stand. The biggest decision a man will make the biggest choice of life is where you will spend eternity. And irrespective of what you've gone through and what you've done, you are here today and you say, Preacher man, I want to come to Jesus. I want to embrace him as my Lord and my Savior. The choice of where to spend eternity is the most important choice. And you are here listening to me online, offline, and you have not given your life to Christ. Wherever you are, 
the opinion of man does not matter it is what god says that validates you you can raise up your hand and we will pray with you and the lord jesus will come into your heart it will be your lord and savior anywhere in this audience why we will bow down our heads if you are here just raise your hand up just where you are just raise it and let me see that hand and we will pray with you and we'll ask him god to come into your life and to be your savior anybody making that decision god bless you i've seen that hand any other person here we're not in the business of embarrassing anybody but this decision must be answered because it is only when we get it right with this first choice that every other choices can be aligned with god intent for you any other person i've seen that hand i've seen that hand any other person my brother i beg you in the name of god can you just take another step can you just come out here and let's pray together and you will know it for good that on this particular day it will not matter how long you've been coming to our church it will not matter whether you are part of our youth group you can speak christianity but if you've not committed to christ allowing him to be your lord and savior this is the time to get it right with god god bless you that other person come out please and let us pray let's pray together let's pray just turn here let's pray let's pray let's pray go on your knees and let's pray together quickly anybody making that decision online as well you can just make this simple prayer i did it years back and the lord restored me he brought me back to himself made me a name and a praise to the glory and to the honor of his name just say with me lord jesus i thank you for the opportunity to make choice today i choose you as my lord and my savior I ask for your forgiveness for the wrong I've done. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. From henceforth, let decision to life and to godliness be my inheritance. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Our counselors will take you, talk with you, and give you further advice in the way of life. Can we celebrate Jesus as they make their exit out of this place? lastly please lastly lastly a young man walked into my office and he showed me a lady he said this is the person i want to marry and i owe him a sense of responsibility as his pastor to ask him so how did you guys get to meet he said two weeks ago i saw her online on facebook from uyo and i invited her down to lagos so my next question was where did she stay I said, Pastor, nothing happened. I said, you invited him from Uyo. Where did he stay? Uh, he said, my house. And I said to him, the value system of a daughter of Zion, I'm not disputing whether you can meet online, but there's no way he will come all the way from Uyo and stay in your house. And I said, this does not side with righteousness. My hand is not here. He looked me in the face, Daddy, and said to me, what matters is God's approval. And I said to him, you are right. It's God's approval. But God has integrity. This part defiles integrity. He went ahead. It's not what I'm happy about. But he was doomed for failure from the beginning. He crashed. He made another choice in a hurry. Got married within, within moments. It was all over. I'm not telling a storybook. I'm telling a marriage that didn't last a month. This are not Oimbo. I make this final call. I mean not to embarrass anybody. For any reason, you've made choices that are wrong in life and it is haunting you. And for this, your love for God has grown, grown cold. Can you stand up on your feet as we pray together and receive strength and restoration? You can't afford to be shy about this now. I'm talking to you young people. God bless you. Sister, I'm seeing you. It's not you and anybody. Just stand up now and let us pray together. Anybody, again, in that situation, wrong choices of life you've made and it is disturbing your walk with God and you want to get it right. I'm not in the business of embarrassing anybody, but calling men to a relationship with their maker. Any other person, stand on your feet right now and let us pray and there will be repentance. And there will be reconciliation between you and your Savior. I will be honored to have our Father come up and round off for us. Sir. Thank you for your listening attention. God bless you.